One, two, three. Do it. Oh, go girlfriend. I'm your mother. Come on, Thorny. You're losing to the rookie. It's embarrassing. Come on, Rabbit. You can do it. Oh, Rabbit, he's killing you. I got Thorny in front by a lot. What's the matter? Your mama didn't teach you how to chug? Come on, Thorn. Come on, Thorn. Oh. God damn it. I am all that is man. Hey folks, it's episode 5 of the Safe Space Podcast. As always, my name is Paul Zico, joined by Miles Harrington. I had some of my mother's fresh American bacon this morning. You know I'm ready to go. I'm shaking for some bacon. Adam Reno. I'm a baller on a budget, so I'm hungry. Juan Cordero. You gotta love the Miami Sound Machine. <laughs> so, for this episode of the podcast, we're gonna discuss our uh, visit to the 100th running of the Indianapolis 500. Vroom, vroom. Awesome. Uh, joined here at the podcast are a couple of guests who actually joined us at the race my brother, Steven Zico. I found my safe space. <laughs> <laughs> About time. And David Zico. Hey, I'm David. I'm still trying to figure out why the hell they woke me up. You sound like you're tired. <laughs> like you just woke up. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we the four of us actually had a chance to visit the uh, Indianapolis 500 last year for the first time together, the four of us, at the Safe Space. Um, this year, um, we were able to bring along these two guys for their first time. What an addition. Yeah, and it was, a you know, the more the better. So um, I guess my first question is, guys, how do you think it went? Um, lots of people and lots of noise. <laughs> a ton of noise. It was very noisy, yes. But um, I enjoyed it. I'm glad we got to go. Um, it definitely wasn't as packed as I thought it was for all those people. Right, that right. Place, that Sell place is out huge. My ass. <laughs> they they did a good job of navigating people where to go. They, yes, they like, did. Even though, like you could say, this isn't their first rodeo. It's no, the it's 100th the 100th run. It's the 100th. <laughs> but there's only one 100th time yeah, right, where right, right, there's right, only right. one time where they have to worry about it selling out. It usually doesn't sell out. So when you think about it, we have big events here at our local spot here, like Elton John or whatever. It's like, okay. Which but I went here, to and was awesome. It was. We, I was there too. It was bad. I'm nice. jelly. Yeah. And when we went to the 99th, we are like, okay, this is probably an average crowd, obviously still pretty packed. Yeah. But when we're hearing that it's going to be completely sold out, both stands and general admission, talking about somewhat about 350,000 people, which is bigger than the city of Fort Wayne, we're right. like, w- where are we going to be able to walk? And we get there and we're like, what's, yeah, what's, what's this all about? It, it wasn't became, that big of a deal. On that day, it became the top 15 in population for cities Size. in the United States. Yeah. It just for the time that people just were in there. Just the track, just at the track. Yeah, yeah. just at the track there. I think That's they said crazy. The, the final count was 420 plus thousand exactly. Good god. That's so a lot of people. You have to expect with that that traffic would be an absolute nightmare. I had a friend of mine that lives in downtown Indianapolis, so he's east of the track and he's t- texting me, he goes Hey, are you at the track yet? I go, no, we're on 465. We'll be at the interchange in about 10 minutes. He goes, good luck with that. He was sitting in traffic for an hour and a half. They literally were able to turn out of it. They went back to his apartment, had a couple beers, and they walked. And he said, this is about two hours later, he's seeing cars that he was sitting behind and got to the track before they did. Wow. So, you know, if you're we going were to the lucky. Indy, we yeah. were. If you're ever going to the Indy 500, take 465 West. Yeah. Yeah, and around there, but not all of you, because then it will become crowded. <laughs> Leave space for us. Yeah. So let's go every other. All right, you, and now, all right, you, and then you. All right, not you, then, not you. Then, You're cool. Then, then. We appreciate you making future traffic for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just want to put that Paul. out there. Right. It was a true asshole move. <laughs> so speaking of asshole move, we get in. 
Paul very nicely, not like an asshole, paid for our parking. We start walking the short half mile. Hey, thanks, Paul. Uh, what did you do, sir, soon after that? I hit a fruity pebble and spilled all my beer. <laughs> the cooler went boink, and yeah. two beers explode. Yeah. Yep, Day yep, almost yep. ruined. And that guy even called you out. He's like, well, at least it's cooler as light. So once you guys walked in, what were your first thoughts on when you see the track from the inside from the infield? Well, honestly, my uh, my first impression, like I've driven around the track before, you know, I've been through that part of Indianapolis before, but sure. when I actually got up on it, when I was right outside the front door, so when it really, really, really hit me exactly how big this place actually is, the track they said was two, it's almost two and a half two miles. Half miles. The track is two and a half, or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yes. It, it, yes. like you don't understand exactly how big that is until you're right up on it and see it just in one spot. So many people, so tall, so long, just it's huge, huge, huge. Those cars definitely don't make it look like two and a half miles, but no, um, no. right. We but were, it we, is giant. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Who was counting? Like we were counting. Like yeah, yeah. Me and Steve and, and I were counting. Yeah. We're like at first it was like. It started like maybe 40 seconds. I think within the first five laps, right off of pace, they were right around 38 seconds, 30, I think, yeah, yeah, for yeah. a full Just lap. Just getting started. Right, right, right. And, right. and then when they, they were really just started now getting, getting up, up the speed, though, like, it was they like were just, 13, you know, 10 out. seconds yeah. for them to come all the way yeah, around. Was, like, what? I think the fastest time within the first 25 laps, I want to say, was 24 seconds, I think, for the car to go from one spot all the way around the two and a half miles <laughs> back to that same spot. And that's insane. Like, think about that. Two and a half miles in just under 30 under, seconds. Under half a minute. Like, right. that's mm-hmm. that's fast. Like, yeah. really, really fast. Fast. Now, uh, the cars are cool, everything. The track was amazing. Um, but I do want to point out that one of the coolest experiences uh, from the, uh, the race just starting was... They have all those people there and the ceremonies before the race. And yeah, you bet oh, for sure. That's, that's one just, I'm really glad crazy. that we got to and get the there And the 100th running was a little bit different yeah. than what they did last year. I mean, not a ton, but still, like, they made it. It was like church. Where right, else do yeah. you have a prayer? Yeah, yeah I, was, I was actually really Over shocked about that. 300,000 people and all get together and pray. Yeah. They do yeah. the blessing that's, in that's multiple a, languages. Like, yeah, that's that was cool. neat. Yeah. They do it for each driver. Right, right. They do a blessing for each driver in the their own native so language. if there wow. was 37 different languages spoken between the drivers Even though they there's would only do 33 drivers very by. <laughs> and if they only spoke two languages and they'd only do it for two like that's that is pretty cool i had a very neat experience with that before the race you guys know that my bladder is very very small it's about a half dollar <laughs> yes, size yes and He's like I, a pregnant I like my beer, so. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I've gotten to the point where I know where all the bathrooms are now at the Indy 500. You have to. And we'll get into more of this later how critical that is. But he right did before, go the, before the start. Yeah. <laughs> right before the start, I did go. So that was at turn two, where I knew exactly right. where it would be. We were standing at turn one to watch the start of it. So I was like, gentlemen, I'll be back in about 10 minutes. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. 25 minutes later. <laughs> yeah, I <was> <laughs> so I walked later. back. Well, what did delay me was a really cool moment. Between turn one and turn two is the Indy Racing Hall of Fame. Right. And right in front of it, they have a fountain and a U.S. flag. Well, to the point where I was walking back from the bathroom, I got right in front of that when they started playing taps. So as soon as they did, I took my hat off, put my hand over my heart. And I kind of noticed people. They're still walking around. And there were just about three of us within, like, a 50 foot radius all about my age we have our hand over our heart and looking at the flag in commemoration of those that died you know it's memorial day weekend uh, when they played taps and when it was over there was a gentleman who was probably in his 70s you probably served in korea who was working the event he turned to us and goes gentlemen thank you i was like i didn't think anything of it but as i really sunk in it's like here's this man served in the military, you know, thanking us for saluting him. And it's like, man, no, thank you. Right. right You're right. a true patriot, Miles. It's definitely an American event. Um, you can definitely feel that from being there, and I've never seen anything like that at any other sporting event. So we were just inside turn one, just kind of, actually we were. We were sitting right where the yeah. emergency crew is. How many laps do you think we sat in turn one and watched? Uh, 10, 15, 15, 15, 10, 15. 10, 15. 10, 15. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, we I'd have, say a baker's dozen. You know, <laughs> there's so many fun things to do and just people watch and like concerts going on inside where the race is. It's crazy. A yeah. golf course. 
I mean, it's all yeah, it's the golf all course stuff. is cool. And it's yeah. on inside and outside the track. Right? Yeah, Did you know that? Yeah, on inside the in inside the track where the golf course was, there was people just walking around like throwing footballs and frisbees and right. stuff. Like, well, I don't have a grand old time. I don't know what you guys were watching, but uh, me and Juan seen two kids beat the shit out of each other at rakes <laughs> on the <laughs> golf course <laughs> with rakes. Or yeah, like three kids. Yeah, there wasn't much golfing going on. Right. There. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, I missed that. A bunch of little rugrats running yeah. around. <laughs> Now my day was running. Right, I didn't see that. <laughs> One of my favorite things to see, though, was when we got to the back straightaway. That's between turns two and three. So now we're kind of walking up around the track. There's a hill over there where you can really see that straightaway. And it's, it's pretty cool. A lot cool. of people camped out on the hill. Just yes. watching. Yeah, it's general admission. So here's just also for future reference, anybody that's deciding to go. As well, far as other events go, the race is super cheap. Infield tickets are like 40 bucks if you buy them straight from the Speedway. Mm. And even like for the really nice tickets, like up in the grandstands, they're not that much more. And then we've been in the pits before, and the face value on those aren't very high. They're less than $100. So it's just go if you have a chance to go, go. Now, when you don't know what to talk about with people, you often talk about the weather. I do want to discuss the weather for a minute, though. Yes. It was not too terrible. It was low 80s, decent breeze, sun's out. Speaking about weather, the first time I ever went to the Indy 500 was with a buddy, two buddies of mine and went down, and we went the day before, and we got there at like 3 o'clock in the morning and stopped at a, a Taco Bell, and my buddy Mark was like, this is the way to do it. It's the only way to do it. Get in line. Get in line. Get in line to... Um, to wait for the wait to hear this big cannon go off. So I guess at five a.m. in the mor- in the morning is when they let this cannon go off. It's now you're talking about cannon. like waiting in your car. Yeah, right? waiting in the car yeah. on the street. Um, He's hardcore. Now these people no, they Mark is follow racing. Not hardcore. hardcore. He is has <laughs> bumper stickers. Watch hardcore. He is hardcore. <laughs> so he's like, this is the only way to do it. Um, we got in line. We're on in the street. We're under this overpass, and all of a sudden, I'm like, Mark, what are we doing? He's like, we're gonna get out and start drinking beer. Five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> get out. It's a great excuse. Day. That's how the day starts. America. Get, get get out. Take our take our chairs out. Get the cooler out. People are grilling outside. Five o'clock in the morning. People are already started grilling and like, you want a steak, Bill? Yeah. Okay. Let's get a, let's get a steak. And you sit there for about you know you wait till five o'clock in the morning, and then boom, you hear this big old cannon go off. Everyone hurries up, gets back in their car, and. <laughs> So after we drove down the back straightaway, we get to the All Herald well, we Snake Pit. We walked. Did I say we drove? Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> it was all walking. <laughs> so one of my favorite parts of the Indy 500 is the Snake Pit. And if you guys have never heard of it or are only slightly never aware of what it is, um, it's essentially a rave within the infield, uh, turn three of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, specifically the Indy 500. They don't have it for the brickyard. But, like I said, it's a rave. So they always bring in these huge EDMX. When I say huge, I'm talking like Steve Aoki and Skrillex, like the biggest names in yeah. EDM. Or just someone's laptop. Or, yeah, come see yeah. me on my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. My name but, is and, Skrillex. And I'm not the biggest like EDM fan, but, dude, to see just... Oh, we saw Skrillex, right, for right, a good yes, 20 yeah. minutes. Yeah. I could have stayed there for an hour and watched this right. set. Easily. Oh, yeah. And not even been right. in the Snake Pit. We were outside of it, kind of where the guardrails and the state troopers were kind of like, you know, guarding that little place though. off. But yeah, you could totally, yeah, totally see the yeah, show. It's a Mac. Right. I would have sat outside the gates and watched Skrillex Mac. for another hour. <laughs> it was just a great, great, now, great Now, did you hear a single show. car... Or did you? Did it feel like no, you had the race? No, no, no. no. And this, the, the downside about the snake pit is if if you want to hear the cars go by, don't go to the snake you pit. You ain't gonna hear shit <laughs> you're not gonna hear anything but the. It's speakers. a world within another world. Correct. Yeah. It's it's funny to to come up to the snake pit because it's like the cars when you get by. when you get closer and closer to the snake pit, it's just like. <laughs> 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 Slide and, shit. and the <laughs> crowd gets it's a little bit different. You're like, you paid to go to the race? Like right. you just look like a raver. Why? Yeah, why would you the scene, scene yeah, that changes that you so can have that too. anywhere? Well, but Grant, it's brilliant these... for the motor speedway to do that. Oh, let's have a oh, rave sure. inside. It, it goes from extra like money. straight up America guy no, with it like starts, a it starts at America 6 a.m. Those kids get in there. Yeah. 
these guys these to... guys show up Saturday afternoon, <laughs> pop their camp up, start drinking, go to bed, wake up at five o'clock, five thirty in the morning, and they rave from six a.m. to like eight thirty at night. Dude. I had friends this year that went to the Snake Pit. They got their Friday and really? stayed till Jeez. they stayed at the See, uh, that's Coca-Cola a dedication. trailers. That's a uh... I don't have that much X. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Are you rolling? <laughs> I would have to count how many times I would have to uh, go to the bathroom between Friday. <laughs> I have the restrooms there down pat. If you're going to go in from the west side infield, where is the starting pole, mm-hmm. you, you can use some restrooms right about there. But once you get to turn one, your next stop is turn two. So you always use a turn two. And even if you don't have to go before turn three, use it. Because you're going to get stuck at the snake use pit for longer than it. you want. Hey, and you're going to be hurting until turn four. There isn't even a restroom on the inside. You have to go out to the North Vista, use there. And that's a bit right. of a hoof because yeah. the next restroom, again, is until the pole. Did I've I- got this down. <laughs> so we carry the coolers uh, around the snake pit. We enjoyed that. We get back uh, to the straightaway and kind of seeing all of the ambiance of the kiosks inside mm-hmm. there and then these two boys got their first experience at the raceway hall of fame ah well there's a lot of reading is what it was we it's almost missed the last like two laps of the race <laughs> this yeah. is true because you guys are taking forever <laughs> i'm ever. a history guy like I, I was my first time come on give me a break that's fair that's fair i got to watch the race i stood outside watching our coolers because you can't take them inside so I was standing there watching between turn one and two, and I'm asking people. I couldn't see any of the screen, so I had no idea what lap it was. I was like, hey, uh, anyone have any clue how many laps left? I got five assholes in there taking up my time, and we might miss the end. So we finally got out. I would say, like, ten laps left, tops. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think there was probably nine or ten end. laps left. And that was really exciting yeah. based on what happened. So just since you guys got went, I was wondering some we were in the Hall of Fame museum for so long. Like, what was kind of cool? What would you like about it? Uh, I just liked the cars. I wanted to jump in one. I seen this little girl get in one, and they snapped the <laughs> picture really quick, and I was just Whoa. jealous as all hell. So, Well, in, in all fairness, that was actually set up for people to get into an indie car so that the people could snap a picture of you, and you could buy it for, like, six bucks or something like that. Oh. oh I didn't I, see any stuff. Yeah, it, was, it, was like a, it was, like, a set-up, like, little indie car. Like, hey, take a picture of an indie car. Six Hurry, bucks. little Billy, get in there. Yeah. <laughs> then why did her dad tell her to jump out real quick like she did? Because there was, like, eight people in line. Oh, Because well, he wanted to get in. Yeah. <laughs> or, or, yeah, that too. Like, my turn. My turn. Well, I liked all the motors that they had set up there. They had all the engines out of the cars on stands, um, cleaned up and everything. It was very cool to see. Uh, uh, you know, it's you would think, like, oh, this is a Chevy engine and this is a Dodge engine. They had, like, import engines that were, like, V8 right, yeah, souped up and stuff. Right, right, it right. was very cool. And they had, like, probably 10 of them. Turbocharged, all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, cool so thing is, I've never seen a V8 Honda motor. That was cool. But you'll see one at the 500 uh, <laughs> Museum. I yeah, promise you. That somebody actually used. Yeah, it was awesome. It, it's pretty legit. But my, my favorite part about that, uh, the Hall of Fame, was um, actually just the historical aspect. I mean, they've got winners in there from the 500, uh, the Brickyard, and just all sorts of stuff, stock cars in there. But uh, they've got cars in there that ran, like, any 500 winners from, like, the one that shocked me the most, 1914. Like, mm-hmm. And did, did it tell you what the speed of the, like, the... <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. The top speed was, like, 68 miles an hour. <laughs> yes. Like, lame. <laughs> like, that's insane. I'm talking about <laughs> these guys. But at a time when people were still lame. riding horses to get from one place to another, right. that's, <laughs> like, 1914. Like, the, the literally, the gas tank was sitting on the back, like, where a trunk would be. Yeah. And it was not just... Sitting there, it was strapped in by a leather belt. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty, pretty, pretty interesting. It's Seeing Tony Stewart's NASCARs up in person were actually pretty, pretty cool, cool. So yeah. speaking of, I was thinking about this today. Speaking of Tony Stewart, he's one of the few drivers. I think there's only a handful that have done the Indy 500 and NASCAR on the same day. Yeah, Coca-Cola wow. 600. Can you really? imagine? It was like 1,200 miles or whatever it was. Can you imagine <laughs> driving for that long yeah, in that, Jeez. like in that heat in a car, that many laps? Dude, that's insane. Was Who? he or was he not wearing underwear during all of this? <laughs> Chafing. Oh, oh my God. He probably Song. looked like uh, Ricky Bobby in his whitey tidies. <laughs> Help me, Jesus! Help me, Jewish God! Help me, Allah! Ah! Help me, Tom Cruise! Tom Cruise used a witchcraft on me to get the fire off me! So after we finally... Now, part of it was we went to the Hall of Fame because it's air conditioning. We're all sweating balls. <laughs> 
Um, so uh, we, that's speaking of uh, sweat and balls. If you're a male and you go to the 500, like this is Memorial Day, you know, opening lake weekend, it's very hot usually. Bring a travel size baby powder. Just, just do it. The chafe is real, talk, dude. Talk it up, man. Talk it up. Gold the, the, the chafe is real. Talk, talk it up. Um, so then Miles is like, all right, guys, we've only got a few laps. Let's just get going. Find a, a spot to watch the closing of the race. Miles, you want to recap? How did the race end? Well, okay, first I have to ask, who here remembers who won? Rossi. Yeah, it was that. Yeah, Alexander. Rookie. I was hoping you guys raised hands. And then, <laughs> they're like, oh, yeah, we knew it the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, like because Paul said it. The American. Yeah, Alexander Rossi, he is a rookie from Andretti Racing. Okay, if you're Marco Andretti, you have to be a little bit pissed that your oh, rookie yeah. teammate right. won. Now, the first year I ever went was Marco Andretti's rookie year. I believe he was about 19 years old. He had the lead coming off turn four in the finish, and Sam Horace Jr. at the last second passed him and beat him by, like, a half car. So he's got to be pretty peanut butter and jealous about that. And he won by, like, 12 seconds. So I enjoyed that. Rossi got the win, and then he ran out of gas on the track. Really he was doing did. his victory, victory lap. They, they had, had to tow him into yeah. winter I thought they circle. were going to, when they went to tow him, I thought they were going to give him some gas so that he could do, do his do a final yeah, lap. Like, that would be cool. Yeah. But they actually just nah, towed him in, and it. then he... Yeah, he okay. went and drank his milk. The first year I went, I actually got to go on the track and go next to the bricks and actually kiss the bricks, but I oh, lost wow. the picture. But I have I have another picture of me on the tracks, like... Hey, you know, just on the track, which is really cool. Yeah. Freaking that year was cold as hell that year. A lot of a lot of people were in uh in tank tops and whatnot, drinking beer and that's the only thing to keep you warm. <laughs> I do have to say we brought all that beer and like just because it was so hot, I had three beers the entire day. Like I just couldn't do yeah. it. Yeah. Like I know you I and Miles were him. Me, me, yeah, Miles. Yeah, he's and I, like, we're I didn't drink. Okay, yeah, I did. No, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about it for a second. Yeah. No, yeah, we drank. I don't think anybody really drank that much except for you two. But even then, like, we weren't toasted. No, I mean, not no, even close. No, no. yeah, no. no I See, the fact is that you're you're walking that. fifteen, twelve to fifteen you're miles. Oh, yeah, the entire time you're there. Mm-hmm. So it's not like you're sitting in one place just getting hammered. It just right. doesn't work that way. And I'm constantly on the move. You're constantly doing something. You're just always hydrating. Like I probably had three or four bottles of water to my one beer. Right. right. That's just, you just have to. Otherwise, you're going to feel like crap when you're walking. Yeah, your Fitbit would have lit up. I think my shorts had, like, two bottles of water just alone. (laughs) (laughs) Eat my shorts. (laughs) Drink my shorts. (laughs) Gross. I'd say one of my favorite things was just, I mean, two o'clock, posting up in the grass, and there's thousands of people walking next to you. We're just eating sandwiches and drinking, you know, beer, like, it's pretty cool. Steven, what was your favorite part of the race? Uh, favorite part of the race. Wow, that's or hard. That day. so many different. Um, honestly, favorite part was probably going into the tunnels and hearing them literally go over. Oh, I, I'd yeah, say, that's awesome. was that turn three, the short tunnel? Or yeah, was that yeah. turn four? I can't remember. But It was on the back. The, the back end, though, yeah. by the uh, the North Vista. Those... If you go, like, they have these tunnels that run in and out where cars run the infield. to park yeah. in the infield. Like, Some people can park in the infield. It's like a road. Um, but you can walk under those tunnels, obviously, and when the cars go over you, they're just extremely, extremely loud. Extremely loud. So pretty much the sound and the probably the opening was probably my two favorite parts of that. It was pretty, pretty sweet. Pretty cool. Yeah. I think I did look at Paul, though, when I saw, when the, I guess the officiator was um, saying a prayer. Like, we said that earlier in the podcast, obviously. Think about how many people are just everybody's bowing their heads and everybody's hats off, right? And they're praying, like you don't see that every day, especially right. with all the stuff that's been going on in the like the world nowadays. You know, like about religious freedom and all this violence crap. Like that was actually pretty calming and respectful to do that. I well, like that a lot. Well, the thing is, is even if you're not religious, just imagine all those people just shutting up for a second, right? 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 right just exactly. to have the reverence like, to do that. Obviously, like, it means a lot if that many people are just having a moment of silence together. Right. Like, when does that happen? Right, the odds are not all of them are of that faith. Right, no. right, right, right. But they recognize, yeah, the size of the magnitude of the event. Right. Even that in itself is cool, you know, cool enough. I mean, but yeah, it was awesome. I would, I'm just going to say, there's the one picture, there's one picture I'm just going to say I exactly. took that I thought that kind of like, oh, I know the one you're kind of embodied everything that like was going on, exactly what uh, Stephen was saying. Uh, and it was uh, two younger people, um, Kissing each other, Good holding picture. and kissing, it and it was I just, love that, that was their first that's experience. My, that's one of my uh, it was awesome. Just the backpack he had on, just you know, just two young people enjoying 
enjoying life and just being with each other and loving each other and just it's just I just hashtag love hashtag whatever hashtag this. He should whatever. have grabbed her butt. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, I want to say thanks to uh, my brothers Stephen Zico and David Zico. Thanks for coming by. No problem. I think I'm awake now. <laughs> thanks for inviting me into your safe space. Right now, we're going to pause for station identification and pay some bills. I'm Ricky Bobby, and if you like hunting knives as much as I do, you gotta have yourselves the eviscerator. Quing Long Ju, the Cadillac's a prune candy. Bob Dawson's diet pork rinds. Hey, is that pork rinds of Bob Dawson's? Big Red, America's number one cinnamon gum. If you don't chew this sh you got something wrong with your head. Chew Big Red, or get out of my face. I'm Ricky Bobby. People used to call me Big Red, but I told them stop it, because there's only one Big Red. America's number one cinnamon gum. What? What'd you say? That's what I thought. Mother So after the 500 was over, um, we had to walk to our cars, which was, what do you guys say, about maybe a quarter mile? Yeah. About a I mean, quarter it, mile. It, so it took mile. a good 15 minutes. It took about 15 minutes. We, we got back, slow. and we had to go to Chicago, which is probably about a three and a half hour, three and a half hour drive. Siri is a bitch, and she had us all over, all over Chicago. It's and not Siri, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Siri, sorry, sorry. So we were trying to find a place to stay, and it was like a block away from the, the Trump Tower. Yeah, yeah, it's right right off the uh, river. Right right off the, right, right down by the river. Um, so we stay. We the stay there. We're all exhausted because we're we're we were at the Indy 500 from like what like noon or well, oh, before, that. before that before yeah. that ten basically. Basically. Yeah. the race was at noon yeah so all day long it's what like 12, 13 hours of Out walking around sun, and drinking and being in the sun and then going all the way up to Chicago and these guys were done but i had fallen asleep for two and a half hours and i was ready to go out <laughs> like, I, I took a like, nap too I'm so i was home. feeling pretty good. <laughs> chicago i was excited to be in chicago and i it, drove the whole way and i was still kind of ready to i mean you're in chicago but being in chicago it, it, especially at night i just feel like nightlife in chicago with all yeah. the lights and the, the buildings and so, so the awesome. way it is so, so much so going freaking on freaking awesome always something going on and, and yep. plus being a being a saturday um, there's just people every everywhere. Yeah. Um, so a friend of mine, Rebecca, that I've known from working at Red Robin, I uh, texted her and she said she wanted to meet up. So uh, I got in the shower, got ready, and I was like, "Hey guys, I'm gonna go meet up Rebecca, and I'm gonna go out there before she gets before she takes off." Yeah. So I leave and I walk, and Siri, <laughs> Siri tells me to go one way, and I'm like, "All right, Siri, take me where I gotta go." This bitch took me. <laughs> this bitch took me the opposite fucking way where I needed to go, and then meanwhile, I'm like guys, I'm te- I text Adam on the um, the group me message, and I'm like, guys, this is way too fucking far. I'm sorry. I- I'll just go and have a couple of drinks, and I'll meet you guys later. So we we come in from like the left side, and as we talk about it, Juan goes, "Oh, did you come in from over there?" and points to the right. We're like. How did you come in from over there? You <laughs> went way out of the way. He went so to Rockford, he, Illinois, then came back. <laughs> Good. Well, Becca was like, on purpose, she said, I picked a bar that was really close to you guys. And so you was, didn't have to walk that and far. I like she that lives bar. Close. And she lives close, too. And she lives really close. She, she said she had a place like right there. Yeah. She lives well, on the two blocks or something, three blocks. Mag, what's it called? The Mag- Magic Mile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where she lives. Yeah. Right close to State Street. But uh, the bar was awesome. So the there's four. Five people already. It's Juan, Paul, Miles, our friend Becca, who Juan mentioned we both, Juan and I, worked with her at Red Robin, and her husband, Peter. Peter. So me and Miles are standing. So there's a table next to us. They get up. So I go over to kind of, first I go, because I'm going to pull the two tables together, Mm -hmm. because that's what any normal human being does when you have a party of six and you have two, four four top tables you just put them together well instantly another server comes and says oh you can't you can't put tables together and we're like why first of all like okay but whatever it's no big deal so then i sit down at the table and she's like well what are you doing so i give her the look like the fuck this is like (laughs) just a random server who we've not interacted with at all. yes not at all and she's not attractive either she's like well with your party or whatever i'm like 
look, lady, I'm sitting down. What else do you need to know? Like, I was trying to motion Miles over, like, hey, let's us two sit. But I'm turning facing the other way so that I can face Paul and Juan and Peter and Becca. And she says, you can't face that way. <laughs> I, I just could not believe that. Look, lady, I'll face the ceiling if I want to. <laughs> right. Like, you can't tell me which way to face. No seat for you. And the table Bar was Nazi. actually in our server's section. Like, are all Chicago bars this weird? But outside know. of outside of that, we were there for a little while. And the no, bar it was, was cool. Very no, chill. Yeah, I like that bar I ordered a lot. some food and stuff. Good like food. Yeah. It was, so we get up uh, the next morning and... W- first things first, breakfast, right? Our four NL jerseys. I'm repping the Reds. Yep. Dodgers. Paul. Go Blue. Dodgers. I got the old school uh, 18 Soto jersey on. Oh, and I keep thinking you wore Fukudome. No. no. And I'm basically the same person. <laughs> <laughs> and I had my Barry Bonds, mm-hmm. Giants. Yeah, indeed. So we go down to breakfast, and it was kind of a different setup. It, it was, was a clusterfuck, you can say it. <laughs> half self-serve, half oh, waited on. Half of the time, or half of the setup was you get your own stuff, like make your own waffle. Right. And the other stuff, was so like continental. And then the other stuff, you have to order like your eggs and your sausage and they bring you your drink. Yeah, whereas stupid. the drink machine was right by where the waffle maker was, and the waffle maker is what you get yourself. So it just didn't make a whole lot of sense. Now, we did meet some nice folks in there. We came in, we made signs for the game we were going to go to. It said the safe space and sharing Facebook, at uh, Snapchat, Twitter, SoundCloud, the whole gamut. And they were like, oh, wh- what are you up to? They could clearly see we were, we were advertising. Right well, they were, so we they were definitely the safe space is. eavesdropping a little bit and just kind of laughing at just what we were saying. They were real cool, husband yeah. and wife, Adam cracking jokes. We definitely the own the room. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, you see like, no four guys, I mean, our size, kind of coming in with baseball gear on. It's and obvious stuff we're going to the yeah. game. Right. No kidding. And it's, we're all carrying poster board. It's and, Memorial right. Day. Yeah. yeah. We, we look like we're like, famous anyway, like some like. <laughs> and to them, we are. Right, right. They probably, exactly. Oh, they know. you're on Twitter, Facebook. Let me let me go ahead and like your page. Let me go they ahead did. and follow yeah, right you. Then. They right did. Right there. Yeah. Because they get it. They know we're awesome. They got. So after we left the hotel, uh, we decided to take the red line up to Wrigleyville, and we had a little trouble finding it. But once we did, Juan had a lot of trouble paying for his ticket. So yeah. Um, since I the last time I was in Chicago was in like 2008. So I put a twenty dollar bill in, and I wasn't even paying attention because I was so excited to get to the game and get <laughs> up front and be in the bleachers. And yeah. I'm with these guys, and these two have never been before, so I'm like super that excited. That was my first time even on the train. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. So I put in a Jackson twenty dollar bill and just <laughs> and I, it's gone. And now what did the, what did the machine gone. say? Like, well, it said it, it said at the bottom change no back. Change. And it says, like, "Do you have Jesus in your life?" And I was like, <laughs> "Yeah." And then the, the lady, the attendant there, was coming. Was like, "Did you read the prompts?" I was like, "Fucking bitch." <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, to, now, to be myself. fair, that Juan was the first one to get up to the machine. So I was the guinea pig. And after him, it could have been any of us. The attendant walked all. the Three rest of us through each prompt right, right. to make sure we didn't fuck up. So she I was can't. Like, so you trying to go to the game? Right. What you need to do is you need one oh, way there and one way back. But she was so she was on this. it. She was very friendly. She was she straight shot town. She got shot in and out. But yeah, Juan unfortunately was didn't get that initial assistance. So, yeah. yeah, I donated ten dollars to the city of <laughs> Chicago. <see> yeah. <laughs> so you're welcome. <laughs> you welcome, Shy Town. So once we got on the train, we all cluster our bodies together and we're very awkwardly sitting. You three look very uncomfortable. And there's me smiling away. I'm right. so excited to be here. The so game. the game, the game, like it was just amazing. Even though I've been there before and Juan's been there to Wrigley Field before, it's an amazing experience just to go, let alone, it's always fun to bring two people that have never been before. It makes it yeah, more. Miles. Like, more of an experience, like, you're showing it to someone, like, oh, oh, walk over this way, there's a cool statue of Harry Carey. Walk over here, oh, you got to do this, like, oh, we got to get pictures, like, that is just awesome. That's just, before you're even in the stadium, you're doing that stuff, Mm -hmm, like, hanging out. Because what's really cool about Wrigley Field is it's in the middle of a neighborhood. Yeah, it's so cool. I'm not a Cubs fan, but 
I've always wanted to go to Wrigley because it's a it's at this point it's like it's a, historical a historical monument. monument. Well, yeah. and we did you a solid. I mean, who were they playing? Well, the Dodgers. <laughs> the it's my first. It was also Dodgers. It's salty. as a Dodgers, Dodgers fan in Indiana. It's my first time seeing the Dodgers play. So here's the the. So we had we had general admission bleacher tickets. So for general admission meaning that we're not assigned a seat. So sure. we all knew. All right, we have to find our spot and get there because we want to be. Right on the ivy, and that was that's like iconic. Front row, for, iconic for right. Wrigley Field, which I've watched plenty of Cubs games. That would be awesome. And so once we approached that gate, and there was nobody there, I was super excited. <laughs> yeah. It's just like all right, guaranteed a front row spot. And I think that's what I really enjoyed about that being my first experience at Wrigley Field, being a Reds fan. You know, a rival of the Cubs. At Cincinnati, I love the stadium, right mm-hmm. on the water. The view it's is great incredible. But even though you have bars around, it's not in the neighborhood. You can't have, oh, hey, we're going to stand in line, and then you two idiots, oh, hey, we're going to go to Starbucks. Adam and I actually went to a bar while you guys waited in line for us. <laughs> right. But I just loved the feeling, that classic, tradition-enriched feeling of Chicago's team. I wore underneath my Brandon Phillips red jersey, <laughs> yeah. the curse shirt, and a lot of people seeing that, uh, sir, are you, are you confused? Really? I was like, no, bitch. <laughs> Cursed. And they're like, ah, oh, that's pretty clever. I was like, I better wear this as much as I can right now because it may no longer be the case here, yeah, right? the the here at the end of this year in the next couple of years. <laughs> but I do have to say, I have to give props to Wrigley. Got to give props to Chicago Cubs. That was my all-time favorite experience at yeah. a baseball stadium. And I've yeah, been to a I lot. Agree. I've been to Boston. I've been at Fenway. I've been I've been to Cleveland, Cincinnati a ton. Yeah, I've been dude, Jacobs Field is awesome. White yeah, Sox. Is. Detroit is nice. Yeah, I've been America. to St. Louis. Once you get past the murder. <laughs> I've been to Dodgers Stadium. And Dodgers Stadium sucks. It's garbage. It's really bad. Uh, Oakland Athletics, the Coliseum, that's a dump. It's bad. Uh, but Safeco, I've been to Safeco in Seattle. That stadium's really cool, San too. San Francisco is awesome. But, Not just because I'm a fan. It's seriously awesome. And I've only awesome. driven past it, but it does look cool being out right on the bay in McCovey Cove. But, but, but Wrigley Wrigley's Field, been my favorite, too. Wrigley yeah. was my favorite experience. It's like going to a museum, like paying homage, like, like of pay loser respects. Dumb. No, yeah, especially for how old the stadium is. Right. And, and – Props to the Ricketts family for you know putting a lot of money into the field and um, bringing new like event things to the field. Uh, there were, since I've been there last was just two thousand eight. Um, oh, oh eight, the last time they won a World Series. <laughs> oh wait, <laughs> but not not not, not then. Wrong but, uh, in two, in 2008, Wrong the last time I was there, I was with my brother, and I was showing my brother around. I was like, you just have to remember, this is an old stadium, and there there's. Things falling from there's like fences, like kind of little nets, like holding up, holding up concrete Debris. blocks yeah, yeah. and stuff like that because it's falling apart. And, that's and they have seats that are cheap because they're right behind. Obstructed. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're obstructed. You can't see, so the the seat is like half price. Yeah, like <laughs> section one. So that's terrible. Section one ter- one twenty in the terrace view. Definitely, if you, you have to double check where it's at because you'll be right behind a pole. And you'll be yeah, like leaning over to the side. But they'll be but super cheap, and you'll through. be excited because you think you're like, oh, wow, I'm paying this much for a Cubs game. Right. Sorry. No. But I think what Juan's getting at is that um, lately in the last few years, the renovations they've done have kept the character of the age of the stadium no. while yeah. still accommodating the crowd. Absolutely. Very, 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 very well said, Paul. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Paul is uh, employed by Wrigley Field, and yes. the more people that go, he gets I, He's an ambassador for the Chicago Cubs. shit ton of gum for free from them. <laughs> yep. Drake is to the Toronto Raptors as Paul Zico is to the Chicago Cubs. No, to just Wrigley Field. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Dodgers fan. So now we're in the stadium, and uh, tell, tell tell me something about like when you're walking in the stadium and getting to your seats. What is something that well, like, first, grabbed you? I have to. Most? What really grabbed me was when I walked in, I was holding all our signs, and they didn't check my signs at all. We could have put <laughs> some of the most profane shit on there ever <laughs> right, 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 right. on the front row. Yeah. But, of course, we just had our safe space signs promoting us on – YouTube, Facebook, the Twitter, first thing, so on and so forth. Because we were in the outfield, so the first thing, okay, so Adam's in front of me. I think I'm second of the four of us. Yes. He's running up the ramp, going down to the bleachers, make sure we got a spot. He's going to reserve the four spots for us. I'm just a little bit behind. Um, but as soon as we kind of break through the tunnel and you're at the top of the bleachers, right. the outfield 
and the ivy and the brick. The fir- I'll, I'll be honest. The first thing I did when I went down to our actual seats, I reached down and touched the ivy. Now <laughs> oh, it's yeah. further than it looks on TV. Oh, yeah, it's sure. a good four feet. So you have to be really tall and long armed. And I could barely get it. But yeah, I'm not touching it. But I, but it was the first thing I did. I was like, man, if I could only like pull off a sprig, like, that'd yeah, yeah. be awesome. But Here's the ivy couldn't, from Wrigley. Do it. Yeah, 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 that'd be so cool. That it blew my mind how big the warning track was. On TV, it looks average. It's like 15, 15 20 feet. feet. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's, it it looks like it's five feet. <laughs> right. So there's, it's like, warning. <laughs> <laughs> you, get a, you get a running start. One of the renovations that I, I really like, which I didn't think I was going to like, were the two big jumbotrons that are in both left and right, right. field. I thought it would ruin the I thought ambiance. it would ruin it, but it's awesome. Yeah. I loved it. It's no, a it's great it's addition. It's a great addition. It to doesn't the ruin field. anything. No, it doesn't. It looks really well. Yeah, I couldn't fun. imagine, like you guys said, before not having that. And <laughs> yeah. like you said, it used to have like an old time clock. You couldn't see no, replays. No, okay, the but, old that's, time but that's all was... that they had. Oh, yeah, that's all. Yeah. I, I couldn't imagine. Runs, I runs, hits, and errors were brought up by like that guy. He's eighty-seven. Right. He just yes. adds the things. Right. Herb, <laughs> Herb sits up there yeah. and he changes. <laughs> we're, missing a, we're missing a six. Just put that nine upside down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, they have a lot to be proud of. Man, that's a cool. That's a good, cool spot. Yeah, yeah. And there, and we, yeah, we'd met quite a few people just chilling before it, the game starts. It mm-hmm. was cool just to uh, talk to some of the people there, and we actually had a chance to. Uh, talk to some of them while we were there. Sorry. Hey guys, what's up? It's Juan here from the Safe Space. We're here at the Friendly Confines. We're gonna do a little bit of a couple of interviews here. Um, I have Jimmy with me right at the moment. Um, I'm gonna interview Jimmy here for a little bit. But uh, Jimmy, is this your first time here at the Friendly Confines? Oh no, no, I've been here many times. A lot. Can you recall your first experience <laughs> at Brittany Field? Uh, yeah, third grade with my dad. Oh, First base side. Awesome. It's a uh, Cubs Giants game. Cubs Giants game. Yeah. Oh, that guy likes you. <laughs> yeah. Cubs Giants game. Well, awesome. Um, how many games have you been to so far this year? Oh, uh, this year this is my first. This, this is your first one. Yeah, this, year. this is my first this year. Mine too. Mine too. Um, what would you say would be your oh, most no. most memorable Cubs experience at Wrigley Field? I would say that was my last game. Uh, not gonna not gonna Redbirds. The Cardinals out. Hell yeah. Yeah. Not doing Redbirds out, right on, man. So, is there is there something else about what 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 about Wrigley makes you keep coming back? Makes you a Cubs fan? The atmosphere. The atmosphere. Yeah, the fans. Yeah. It's, it's just in itself. It says a friendly conference. No matter how many times Cheers. you come, you never see people fighting. You never see anyone getting all rowdy and stuff. You may after a couple of drinks or whatever, whatever. But I mean, it's always a friendly confine here. Everyone's always friendly. I met you just 30 seconds ago, and you seem like a pretty good guy too. I thought like you were in the military. Yeah. Yeah. With uh, army. Yeah, I was. Awesome, man. Thanks for your service, man. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And what's funny is they were. He was normal there. <laughs> yeah, as the game went on. Before he got drunk. As the game went on, he had a lot more fun. <laughs> and a lot more. I saw their funny. stacks of cups. Like, they were about 12 deep. And yeah. that's nine fifty of beer. Wow. Yeah. How can you cut... How can you afford Daddy's that money? Or you're doing something that I need the to get in on. The ticket to the game, on. food, other stuff. I mean... Right. W- that's unreal. He's, he spent over a hundred dollars on beer that day. Oh, easy yeah. between them. That someone would bring back a beer and it was chug, 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 <laughs> three, four, an inning. Right. Which you know, I had like, two, and I was like, <laughs> I better so work I'm extra cool. hard on yeah, it. I'm gonna on p- spend nine fifty to drink this beer as fast as I can and get a third of it on my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> like that's just that's Yellow. poor financial management. <laughs> right. You don't care. I mean, we had to cut out me and Juan um, during I think the fifth inning. Just to yeah. grab like some food, just I mean, I'm at Wrigley. I'm gonna try a, a sausage. Like I'm gonna try something to eat. Yeah, get that bowl of sausage. And I did have to. I mean, I had to donate blood and sign a waiver. And, <laughs> no kidding. I mean, but but right. I had to. I chose. I had a bottle of water. <laughs> I had to man the food. And it was awesome. No, oh, yeah, yeah, that, that food was amazing. It was, it was really good. Really, really good. What I think was probably the biggest part of the game experience was. Wants now claim to fame, which those kids that he interviewed thought he was. He actually is. He got what <laughs> two hundred thousand views on Snapchat. Yeah, I had two different snaps actually be used for the Chicago snap, and it, uh, Chicago one of them, story. Yeah, Chicago, the Chicago story. So one of them had like what, like seventy five 
75,000 views. Yeah. Oh, and, and that was only one, midway through the day. Yeah. That wasn't 24 and hours the way that The way that Snapchat works is, if you're not familiar, is when you're in a big city or there's a big event like the Indy 500 or um, the Boston Marathon, what Snapchat does is it makes its own Snapchat story of that event or a major city that you're in, San Francisco, right. New York, Chicago. Now, it's Memorial Day, and you're in Chicago. So it's like double whammy. So right. Chicago's story is all people doing things on Memorial Day. If you looked it up that day, there was people on the beach. There was people going to the Cubs game. And then we get to Juan. Yeah. Um, I, I just decided to just do snaps just from from – my Snapchat and started doing stuff with the flag coming out. And I was like, here comes a flag. I don't think it's going to fit in the stadium. Cause and it's then, Memorial day. It's Memorial day covered the out entire the, outfield. Oh, that was amazing was when ceremony. they waved it. And then right. all the servicemen out there, mm-hmm. it was, it was pretty, pretty moving. It was I, pretty awesome. I think what was hilarious is we discovered all this on the way back from Wrigley after the game is over. And Juan is looking at the, the Chicago story through Snapchat and he sees the picture of the flag he's like i think that that's that's me right i'm like i took that that looks familiar so it's nothing it's just the picture of the flag but he's like i swear i took that that's mine and we're all kind of like well that's cool but how do we know no dude that's me that's where we were sitting like later on through the same story there's a picture of Juan's fucking face talking go go his fucking I'm face not yeah. just his face <laughs> like all right yeah so they use two of yeah, his right, videos here we go and i was like bottom of second, the ninth yeah. that second spot most certainly Put the nail in the coffin. Yeah, they used two of your snaps. Yeah. And well, yeah, what were you saying in that, in that I, second It was one? like the bottom of the ninth. I was like, here bottom of the ninth, two outs, got one more to go. Here we go, here we go. And so all you see is Juan in his Cubs gear, and he's showing it to himself, just like cheering on his team through Snapchat. <laughs> and they put yeah. it on the story. And it was genius because if you look at those Snapchat stories, that's how they do it. Mm-hmm. Like when I watch for the Warriors, they'll have the, the Warriors game. First, they'll have Steph Curry doing his pregame warm-ups, and they'll have a fan right there like, Steph Curry doing his warm-ups. Then they'll have the opening tip. Then they'll have midway yeah, through like, the first quarter. So they go through chronologically. The the, so when you game, say, yeah. when you say, oh, there's two outs in the ninth, here we go, here and we here's go, like yeah. the last out, then it's perfect for right. Snap to take over. It's chronological. I mean, it was genius, really, which there's, I don't think you knew that you were going to be I, doing that. That was not, yeah, I wasn't trying to. Yeah. I've known you for a long time, and you're not that intelligent. <laughs> No, but no. that was baller. <laughs> it, was, it was very cool. So the Cubs did win the game, and after we decided we got to stay in Wrigleyville for at least a little longer, check and out I, a bar. And I, at that point, like, I got to get up and work the next morning. So I'm like, guys, no, let's just go back. No, we're, like, no, we're in Chicago. We're going to we're gonna get yeah. out. And, the and game, you're going to like it. Yeah, so I'm like, <laughs> fuck, I'm outvoted. And then the game luckily did it out early because it was almost a no-hitter. Right. Yeah, it right. Was it was a one, one hitter, hitter, and combined. I promise you it that was an was error. An error. <laughs> yeah. If it hits the guy's glove, I don't care if he had to do a three ring circus in order to touch it with his glove. Yeah. Man, that's an error, and then that'd be a no hitter. So yeah, that so it got, got over early because the Cubs were playing really well, pitching really well, and we just hit. Uh, I think it was actually called the corner spot. What was it called? Yeah, the sports the sports corner. corner or something like that. Yeah, yeah the sports yeah. corner. Yeah. So we we go into this place because. I mean, at this time the game's out early. We're going to chill here downtown for a minute. It's right on the square by Wrigley. Mm-hmm. Super packed at that point. So we're like, I don't know. Where are we going to sit? We head upstairs because we see there's a staircase. There's a beer garden up there. Completely empty. Like, there's like Crazy. one table. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think it was going to be empty. We're like, really? Like, score? A great place to <laughs> advertise. That was a <laughs> badass spot. That was a cool spot. So I, we took the signs that we made, and we're like, well... We really won't use these signs anytime soon, and even if we do, we'll just make new ones. So we're like, why don't we just leave the signs here in the bar? All right. <laughs> so we set them up. Facing our out advertisement, the yeah, the safe space, and then our little picture in picture. I love the safe space. I'm in the safe space, and we just left it at the bar. I wonder how long that lasted there. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was a cool bar. Probably still there. That was yeah, cool. that I enjoy that, that bar. Was really it was really cool. fun. Now you ran in a guy, uh, kind of a Cubs mascot, so to speak. That's yeah, well yeah. Uh, woo woo, woo woo, yeah, yeah. But uh, someone woo, said, woo, yeah, yeah, woo woo, yeah, yeah. The yeah, 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 is woo woo. But uh, yeah, I ran. I ran into him the last time I was there in, in 08, and I got a picture with him. Um, 
the story about him is it, he was just a homeless guy that would wear um, an outfit and just walk around Wrigley, and then Wrigley basically hired him to be like a mascot kind of, and he would just walk around and take pictures because he would just go to the bleachers. He would get tickets from people, and then he'll sit out in the bleachers and just yell, woo woo. So that's how the woo woo came about. That was pretty yeah, cool. Well, then we then we leave mm-hmm. and uh, we get on the train. Um, what happened before you you got back on the train? You took a while. Oh Lord Jesus! Yeah. So again, at one point I did stop saying, "Where's one?" Yeah, and yeah, you the train donate about ten bucks already. So okay. then what happened? So then it was twenty. I'm looking <laughs> frantically, and the bag. And that's where I thought I left left my card for the train for for the L. And I'm looking and I'm looking and looking, and I'm just like, I just want to get back to the card, fall asleep. I don't know where it's at. I'm like, fuck, are you kidding me? I just lost my card. So I had to buy another card to get all the way back down to the hotel where the car is at. So Juan, that happened. Juan spent forty dollars <laughs> round trip that day. I spent six. Adam spent six. Paul spent six. Us three combined spent less than half than Juan did total. <laughs> the three of us total spent eighteen. Juan forty dollars. The, the memories. Priceless. The next day, Rahm Emanuel got a raise. <laughs> hey, hey, but guess what? So the next day, because I, I asked for the day off on Tuesday, I'm going through and looking through all my stuff. Guess what I find? <laughs> yep. There's the card. <laughs> card. And what makes it even better is once the three of us without Juan walked up, there was a train sitting right there. We are about to get on it. And then we're like, we wait, missed wait, it. wait, 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 wait. Juan. Where's Juan? Yeah, we almost got on it. Yeah. Luckily, since it was a game, every it was like really minutes. like it was less than it was that. Less, it no, was more like five. It's, it's every five it's, minutes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Normally, it's twenty and even later. If it was just a Monday night at midnight, right. they wouldn't mm-hmm. be going that that We've much. We've been waiting there another two hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm walking, and then you know we see homeless people all day long. They've been asking us for money, mm-hmm. change. Can I get this and whatever? God. So this guy comes up to me, and he's like. I mean, you got some change. I'm like, no, I don't have any cash on me. I just got a card. And it's and it like was, midnight. And it's like midnight, and I'm just, I'm like, no, I don't, I don't have any money. I was like, but if you're hungry, I got some crackers, or cookies <laughs> in the car. If you want it, he's like, I'm gonna give it to you. If you're hungry, dude, for real, seriously. He goes, man, you got any meat? <laughs> <laughs> you got, you like got you. any cold cuts? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Gonna get I your know, cold cuts today. I know, I'm a, yeah. I know I'm a, big, a big guy, but damn, am I that big that I always <laughs> you just have cold cuts constantly? <laughs> you chilling with some cold God cuts damn. in your drawers, man. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back to fucking Planet Fitness and why, why work you these cold you'll cuts eat off. Those tots. On Monday, there's pizza at Planet Fitness, right? Sir, I'm starving. <laughs> you have any tacos on you? <laughs> But I, so, I couldn't believe he's like, you got some cold cuts? But so we did, now... The, we gave him the crackers. He looked at them like they were a Rubik's yeah, Cube. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. What, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> cheese, it's homie. Eat them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like cheese? <laughs> so then we leave, and we're on the road for about, like, what, an hour and a half, maybe two hours? And we stop at a, at a convenience store slash well, gas station. Well, I was... Dude, you were out. Miles was trying to sleep. I don't know if he was out, but I was, like... I was yeah, I have no him. idea what the hell you're talking about. Because I'm just... I couldn't sleep anyway, like before. Because like, you were story. panicking, Adam's going yeah. ninety. <laughs> <laughs> like, right, just, just give me home, dude. Just give me home. So yeah, definitely that weekend, the Memorial Day weekend, was an awesome weekend. Hanging out with um, Paul's brothers, um, Stephen and David, was actually awesome. If, um, being around with them and then hanging out with these three knuckleheads, I feel like. Uh, Thanks for my first experience. <laughs> I feel he like, popped his cherry, <laughs> Wrigley cherry. I feel like we we definitely. Uh, grown a lot closer as friends and I definitely know a little bit more about each other from, from the, our experiences. So definitely appreciate you guys. Yeah. You got a little sentimental there. He did. Start crying. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to miss say. you guys. Where are you going? We are, we're not leaving. Like, Juan no, thinks like, we're right, tired we, of him. So he's <laughs> <trying to leave. laughs> We're retiring our friendship and taking our talents to South no, Beach. No, it, it's it, it's just awesome just to be around you know three guys that you, you connect with so well and you get to go and do things with. You know. I wish you guys were hot women so I could actually date you. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to thank the listeners out there for taking the road trip with the safe space. Um, until next time, my name is Paul Zico. Miles Harrington. I had more American bacon for lunch. Adam Marino still waiting for a handout. Juan, where are you at? Fellas, 
Save space. Save space. Save space.